Welcome everyone to the amazing King's Landing in Westeros. We're in Dubrovnik, Croatia, Mike. And winter is coming. It's the middle of summer. <laughs> just, just let me have this one. <laughs> Welcome to Living Phase 2. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy. And we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that full life at King's Landing in Westeros from Game of Thrones. You are loving it today. <laughs> oh, where are we really at, we, Nancy? We are in Dubrovnik, Croatia, friends. We are here on the beautiful Dalmatian coast on mm -hmm. the southern end of it here on the eastern side of the Adriatic Sea between uh, Croatia and Italy. Yes, and as you've uh, probably guessed, uh, here in Dubrovnik, it is one of the most amazing walled cities in all of the world, really. It really is. And uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and because of all this, many scenes from the show Game of Thrones were filmed here, so that's what I'm joking around a little bit. <laughs> but whether or not you're a Game of Thrones fan or not, I think you're really going to enjoy this visit to Dubrovnik, and, and I think you're going to love what you see here today. It's It's been really quite amazing. It is. Why don't you tell them just a little bit about the history of Dubrovnik, Mike? Well, Dubrovnik has gone in and out. It was its own independent um, state. It's been besieged multiple times. I think the most important thing, though, is when Yugoslavia was breaking up in 1991 and Croatia was going through their war of independence, uh, Dubrovnik was a, attacked severely for seven months between Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Montenegro. They were attacking, trying to get this part of Croatia annexed into them. And in fact, the city was shelled for seven months. And much of what you're going to see in our pictures today has actually been rebuilt after that horrific war that only happened 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it is quite stunning what they've achieved and how this city looks today. Yes. Um, now, one of the other things that we want to just give you a little piece of advice is we're going to start walking through Dubrovnik and through this area. It, it truly is a place. This is a don't miss for people that like to travel. But be aware that it has been listed as one of the most over tourist cities it was crowded it's certainly very hot in the summer um, so winter may be coming but it ain't here right now <laughs> and so you want to if you at all possible try to visit try to visit Dubrovnik in the shoulder season oh, I, I agree completely yeah, because yeah. it was crowded I would not hot. say go in the winter because many mm -hmm. things may be closed not operating mm -hmm. things like the cable car you're gonna see later and um, but uh, but certainly uh, if you can get into a shoulder season when it's a little cooler fewer tourists that that's certainly our advice. Well, docked here in Dubrovnik. We don't dock anywhere near the downtown. No, we had to take a shuttle. It mm -hmm. was 15 euros for the shuttle to get from mm -hmm. the cruise ship to the pile gate where they dropped us off. Mm -hmm. And so that is right there at the walled city. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to go into the pile gate. And the first thing that we decided to do was to walk the wall, and which is a good thing. We'd recommend uh, that if you're going to walk the wall, do that first thing in the morning. It it takes about two to two and a half hours if you want to go around the full wall or you, there's different spots where you can get off uh, so if you don't want to do the full walk you can do that too yeah and it was certainly if you're going to come to Dubrovnik if you're at all physically capable mm -hmm. of doing it it is a ton of stairs it's a lot of walking a lot of up and Lots down of stairs yeah but you did it and we, did. we both did it I went all the way around you can get halfway around and there is a set of stairs where you can go halfway and then exit at the right, wall if you right. want and that takes you then down to kind of the main thoroughfare through the town uh, but it is certainly something you want to do and as mm -hmm. Nancy said if you can get there right early in the morning before there's tons of tourists on there, because later the wall gets really crowded. It does. Now there's a 35 euro charge uh, to walk the wall, and it is less expensive if you go during the winter months. That's right. That's right. Um, so as you can see, as we started walking the wall, you can see many of the different views. You can see a view of one of the castles that's up on a fortification, a fort that's up on a hill. That was used as the Red Keep mm -hmm. in uh, Game of Thrones. So if you're familiar with that, this probably looks very familiar. 
The pile gate that you mentioned was also used in some of the filming. Uh, that's the main gate. However, it's a little more difficult to recognize it uh, because it is, um, they're doing some restoration work. So there was scaffolding and everything on the, uh, the outside of the pile gate where we came in. One of the things I found fascinating is Dubrovnik is a, there's about 45,000 people living inside Dubrovnik. And so as we're walking the wall, you can look down, I mean, it sounds a little weird, but you look down into people's backyards, yeah. you can see life happening in this city, <laughs> even though all the tourists are it's walking just around. Beautiful views. It, yeah. it was absolutely charming mm -hmm. to, to walk the wall and to, all that you got to see. Yeah. You can look out over the ocean. You can see the different ferries. There's even a pirate boat at one time that was going by. And I got some video of that. And it's, you know, that really fit well into the whole Game of Thrones theme. Uh, you went up yeah. a tower at one uh -huh. point. Yes, I did. So there's a, a couple places where you can get up a little higher, go up a tower again, more stairs and more steps, but, you know, climb up, get those different views. Uh, but th there's even a cafe. Uh, on the right. wall, there are restrooms. Yes. Um, so as you're walking, you don't have to go down off the wall uh, to go to the restroom. You can go there as well. Uh, but it is uh, it is probably the number one thing to do if you come to Dubrovnik is to uh, head up to the wall and just it's like no other place. We've been to places like Rothenburg and to Carcassonne in uh, in France and some of the other walled cities and but nothing compares i think to what we've seen it was, here. it was pretty incredible yeah so i hope you've enjoyed the the little views and the overview here but certainly that is the number one thing that you're going to want to do well once we completed our march around the wall we headed back down and what did we do more steps <laughs> more a lot of steps uh to a cable car so we took a cable car up the mountain it only takes three minutes to get up there the cost on that was 27 euros and just as a side note they are closed it is closed november through february so be aware if you're arriving so during comes. that time <laughs> yes it closes but oh we got beautiful views up there mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. So yes. a couple little hints here. When you get up the cable car, you can come right out from the cable car and there's a viewing platform in the front. However, don't uh, discount going and going on a little walk. There are several different view areas. There's one that's up higher you can get to mm -hmm. and you can walk around the side. There's a monument there. You can go up to the front. You can actually get some better pictures of the city without the cables in the way that you can get the full the full view of the city and you can see those, those, those pictures here. Um, I enjoyed the cable car a lot. A little expensive at almost 30 you know 30 dollars well about 30 dollars a person round trip on the cable car but I, I thought it was worth it i mean again you're in these places for short visits Certainly and gave us a unique view yes and you see that whole walled city you'll just see uh -huh. you know a view unlike almost any other in the world so i think the cable car was really worth it and you i yes uh -huh. i agree i agree completely okay. on that when we finished up at the cable car, we went back down into the city. We had a light lunch, and then we went to the church of St. Blaise, mm -hmm. where there's relics of St. Blaise down there. And yeah. you, you went in to actually see some of those relics into their museum area. Yeah, into the reliquary, yeah. So they have over 130 different relics mm -hmm. of saints in this small little reliquary. This uh, reliquary is a, an area where they keep relics. Mm -hmm. And they had, at, I think they had five relics of St. Blaise. And for those of you that that aren't familiar with relic. Relics are a um, an article or piece, um, could be physically a piece of bone or a, or a physical piece of skeleton. It could be something that a saint has touched or has been part of their life. So like as an example, the the robe of St. Francis in Assisi, you know, is a relic that's there of him. Well, in this case, they actually did have skeletal remains of St. Blaise. Now, St. Blaise is the patron saint of throat diseases. So you could see him there, but they had some very fascinating relics. Now we can't the, work- A diaper of Jesus. Yes, they had a-, a um, they had a sliver of the true cross. They had several different things. Mm -hmm. Now, no picture taking is allowed in the reliquary, but I went inside, heard it for a while, looked at the different relics, quite fascinating. There is a small charge of three or five euros to go in there, but I highly recommend it, especially if you're Catholic. And following uh, our visit at the Church of St. Blaise, we did a GPS My City, and one of the walks that they have there was a Game of Thrones walk, where we got to see different sites uh, in the filming of Game of Thrones. Yeah, so we, you've heard us talk about GPS My City before. We really enjoy this, and in fact, we're starting to use it more and more and more. 
Great, uh, great app. They're, they're not a sponsor or anything like that, so we just happen to like it. Uh, you can use it as a free version. They also have a couple different subscriptions you can do, but even the most expensive subscriptions, like $18 a year or something, and it's just little GPS maps that take you around to different sites, and as you said, one of them listed is, is Game of Thrones sites, and they do other ones like City Introduction Walk and Walk Around the Wall and those kind of things. It is a great App We've to used have. it a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. So we started looking at that and we said, okay, well, let's take a look at a few of the different sites uh -huh. uh, where Game of Thrones was filmed. The first one was what's called the Jesuit Staircase. And that actually was in Game of Thrones was the Sept of Baylor. So you can take a look at those two things. And again, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this may look familiar to you. And then there's, and I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong because it's in, it's in uh, Croatian, but it's the Polshi Gate. I think it's Polshi is how they pronounce it, Polki. Um, and that actually was the Red Keep Gate. And that we that's on the other side of the city from the Pile Gate. And so that when we came back down from the cable car, we went through that gate and got some good pictures there. And then we walked along to we saw another street that was filmed and it was like the market street we saw that one as well so yeah quite a few different little scenes and clips from game of thrones and that was that was pretty you interesting you guys were kind of geeking out about it yeah we were enjoying it a lot but then we walked down the main street and as we mentioned it was just packed with people it was packed, and it was hot, hot. We, had, we had an we decided to have an ice cream yep we had a gelato an yeah. expensive ice oh cream oh my gosh <laughs> things are a little more costly here in the city yeah especially right on this main street i think we paid like eight or nine euros each for a gelato or something yes. like that but it was good but it was it was very expensive high in comparison to what we had been paying exactly for especially cream. in croatia yeah. yeah that was high for that so as it was getting on in the day and we were pretty tired we decided to go ahead and take the shuttle back to the ship and we went in with our friends but it wasn't too late so we decided to sit in the schooner bar they have beautiful windows there we also watched the sunset and the sail away it was actually a nice evening just to sit and watch the city as we uh, as we sailed out it so. was it was mm -hmm. well, we had dinner and then we went to the headline show which was piano man which mm -hmm. is one of the royal singers who is uh, mm -hmm. singing that so uh, mm -hmm. wasn't somebody that they brought in but mm -hmm. somebody who has been on the cruise with us mm -hmm. from the very beginning when yeah. the singers yeah, yeah. and he's royal. really good yeah he's very good yeah yep then it was time to head to bed because we've got another busy day tomorrow in Coder Montenegro. We do, we do. So we've got a very unique day actually tomorrow. One of our friends found a floating wine bar that serves wine that's that aged fun. <laughs> at the bottom of the bay. And this is something extremely unique in the world and you're certainly not going to want to miss that. And how can they make sure they don't miss it? By like, subscribe <laughs> and turn on those notifications. Friends, mm -hmm. thank you so much. It, it truly, it does help us and, and we just, we appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate you guys watching and enjoying our little uh, adventure yes. here owns in Westeros and, and the whole thing. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see you very soon. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye now. then after that we've we've got a busy day tomorrow because we're going to coder mm -hmm. montenegro yes yep. what are we going to do there mike i have no idea we're going to a wine bar <laughs> yeah.